So Eva, I beg you, fire the person that does your swatches because there's shit at it. Hi friends! Hi! My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And I haven't done a review in a while because honestly YouTube is overly saturated with reviews. I'm not that picky of a person anyway. I don't stay on top of newest releases, indie or mainstream, so when I do decide to review it's because it's either really shit, I really like it, or I just felt up for it. Today we are talking about the Zoeva Spice of Life palette and honestly I decided to review this because this palette catfished me. It was like a reverse catfish because in its promo pictures, I'm gonna put them up here, I, like, I, saw, I saw first the palette itself and I got really excited. And then I saw the promo pictures with the swatches and I was super disappointed because it looked plain as fuck. And then Sephora Romania brought Soeva into their stores, including this beauty over here. And I had the chance to swatch it in real life and I fell in love. A nuance of the favor and like any other surprises of life for tituous moments favorite discovery balance the contrast and this might need variety is key the flavor and finally shape joy and these are all of the shades I hope you can see the dual chrome in these because they're really really pretty the thing is that Zoeva's swatches look a very flat and unidimensional but Actually, most of these have inner depths that were hidden in those promo pictures. So, for example, unlike any other, it reminds me of Nabla Water Dream, in which it is a beautiful shade on its own, but it also acts like a topper that makes every look seem like water getting hit by the light. Then you've got Fortuitous Moments, which looks like any other rose gold in the pan, but Swatch gathers a bit of gold to silver dimension it's not a strong duochrome by any means and maybe if you don't have a good eye for such stuff you'll miss it and it will look plain to you even swatched but i swear it feels like it changes color depending on how the light catches it then balance the contrast which is amazing it's looked plain brownish red in the swatched but it's actually a magenta to orange duochrome not the strongest duochrome out there but it's it's there the flavor is a shade that disappointed me because it looked more more green in the pan than it does on the eye on the eye it looks more cocky uh favorite discovery is a copper with a bit of a reddish shift a variety key is a very pretty and unique shade of brown and well the mattes are the mattes what you see is what you get but they're also a very nice and easy to blend there is no fallout whatsoever of course uh cardboard packaging you don't have a mirror i don't give a shit i'm blind anyway i'm not gonna use these palette mirrors anyway but if you care about that there is that. So overall, I have to say I absolutely love using this palette. It's both great for more complex looks like this one that I have on my eyes. And if you want to see it, watch until the end because I have a step-by-step -step on it. And also for very, very simple eye looks. It's enough to just pop any of the shimmers on the lids and then blend them out with the matte and you're good to go. I've enjoyed using this in my very early morning shifts where I still want to look 
shiny and sparkly and colorful but I don't want to put effort into it and it really does add a pop of certain something on the lids. Price point wise, Zoeva is very affordable. I don't know the price in the US, I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna pop it over here. I'm just gonna pop over the US and European prices. Honestly, I feel that it is cheaper than what you most of the stuff you find at Sephora but as good quality or higher quality like I don't understand why people don't talk about them more I feel that they are higher quality than Urban Decay but don't even get a tenth of the hype that I mean I know life is unfair but this is another proof that truly we're not living in a meritocracy here Overall, I feel that if you don't have these tones in your collection, if you want to try out the Zoeva formula, if you enjoy neutral, rosy toned, coppery toned looks, this would be a great addition to your collection. However, I'm not sure how they would work with someone that has a pinkier undertone than me because those reds and coppers might make you look a bit sickly. So search for swatches, see how swatches look on someone with a similar skin tone. Moreover, if you are darker, the shimmers will work perfectly because they're very opaque. I absolutely have no problems with the opacity, but I don't, like these are the two darkest mattes. So if you don't enjoy using a shimmer in the crease to deepen out your look, you won't have any options aside from a variety ski, which as I said is a shimmer. And there's this white, which for some might seem useless unless you're like white like me and you set it to set your primer. So your mileage may vary depending of course on your skin tone, on your makeup preferences. Anyway, those have been my impressions of the palette. If you wanna stick around and take a look at how I created this, I look over here, which of course I'm gonna plaster all over on Instagram, and if you want to see my looks and flat lays, you might wanna follow me there, if you wanna. If you don't, that's perfectly okay. Let's get on to how I created this look. Hello guys, barefaced Mia here. Let's start working on the look. I'm going to start with the shade called Nuance, which is very ironic because it actually has no color at all so don't know what nuance there is to be found there and i'm taking a huge fluffy brush why does this have a cat hair on it set my primer if you're new here i like to set my primer because it makes everything much smoother and fluffier looking blend wise it may be cheating regarding blending but i don't care life is short and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make my life be easier. Next, I'm going to take the shade Surprises of Life and use it in the crease. See how easy this blends? It's just, it's really nice and pigmented and absolutely no fallout, which I appreciate. Adding some to my lower lash line. the brush in my eye <laughs> oh. on the outer corner and as usual extending it a bit on the outer portion and yes I know I love this eye shape a little too much okay sue me and we're gonna spice it up a bit later you just wait now that we've got the general eye shape defined let's go in with our shimmers I'm going to use Balance the Contrast, which is a really pretty magenta to orange duochrome, which you, you definitely couldn't see that from the swatches. And I'm going to apply it with my finger, starting halfway through and to the edge of the eye. Like, honestly, this palette is like a reverse catfish. You see one boring thing in the picture and then you decide to go with it on a date and you actually meet a Victoria's Secret model. It's, it's, it's nuts. Continuing with Fortuitous Moments. Also has a very pretty rose gold to champagne type of duochrome, maybe even a bit silverish. It's a really interesting color. 
Okay, I feel I covered a bit too much of balance the contrast, so I'm adding it again. Slowly layering to build up the form. Look at me, Bob Rossing it. I'm going to grab Variety's key and use it to deepen out my outer V shape. And yes, I know it's a shimmer. I'm a rebel. It's colored dust and I will put it wherever I want it to, including in the crease and as a deepening shade. And I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of it and add it to the outer edge of my lower lash line and I hope I won't poke my eye out again. Now ladies and gents, for a bit of added visual interest, I'm taking variety ski and going in on the inner portion of this arch over here. Not uniting the two, so it's not it's not an a halo eye because it doesn't extend to the lid. It's just a a line that sort of delimitates the two colors and maybe even make it a bit more prominent in the inner corner. Make this look more evil queen than fancy princess, you know? Darkness cannot exist without light, so I'm taking Unlike Any Other, which is a very apt name because this shade is so luminous and beautiful. And I'm taking it in the inner corner. This is more of a topper type of shade, or at least that's how I enjoy using it, or on the inner corner. Kind of makes everything sparklier. And maybe, you know what, I'm going to add it a bit in the center of the eye as well. I'm just tapping my finger on it and then tapping on the center of the eye, so I'm not trying to take too much of it. I just want a bit of sparkle going on. Let's play a bit with color contrast, shall we? I'm going to take a shared joy and blend out the edge of this reddish eye. I'm taking just a bit of pigment. I'm barely touching the brush and just washing it at the edge. Just to add a bit of orange to that red. Barely touching the brush to the pen and barely touching the brush to the eye. Going to add a bit of mascara and I'm going to use the Maybelline Snapscara because I'm actually taking this look off and uh, yeah. It's easy to take off. That's my sole reason for using this mascara in today's tutorial. Excuse you, sir. Thank you. I really like this mascara because it really lengthens, but it doesn't give a lot of volume, so I don't feel that my eye look gets covered by the lashes. Not that I have enough lashes to cover the eye look, but you know. I'm really enjoying this look. It feels like it, it brings out the green in my eyes. Okay guys, this is the final look. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, evening, a morning, a third lunch, second breakfast, or whatever it is you're from. Bye!